just checking the mic. <laughs> um, so hello, everybody. Dai Gyut, everyone. Uh, Dai Gyut, everyone. Uh, I don't know if the pronunciation is correct or not. I'm just trying. Diyajit, <laughs> thanks a lot. So <laughs> welcome to you all. And uh, we are here to talk about animation and animating your site. So let's get started. Um, So my name is uh, Nikhil Sukul. I am actually working in Faichi as a senior Drupal architect. Um, and uh, I have with me Vidit. Hello, everyone. My name is Vidit Anjaria, working as a front-end developer in Faichi Solutions. So guys, um, it is 1,700 hours. You might have exhausted by the overall from today, the entire sessions, what you might have attended. This is time to get entertained. So animating your site or animation, anything, is pure about entertainment. So it will actually give you a fun walkthrough of how animation goes off and how we can do animation on the site and everything. So what kind of topics we will cover? We'll actually cover what is animation, how it all started, why animation is required. There are approximately 12 principles for animation. We'll talk about those. Um, when, where, and how to use animation. Responsive animation. Mobile phone should have animation. So let's talk about that. Uh, performance, yeah, it's a big topic for animation, how we can increase that. And yes, a followed by a demo. So let's get started. Over to you with it. Thank you, Nikhil. So what is animation? So let's take you to the Latin world, from where this word animation comes to an existence. Animation means, anima means soul in Latin. So what is animation? Adding life to an object and making breathe, move, and get settled down at its position is an animation. So animation is completely based on the frames. Number of frames being used to create an animation is very important. To get the very smooth effect to, uh, to create an animation is very essential. So in the Example uh, image, you would be able to see that very well that human eye can capture 60 frames per second very clearly and can judge the motion and transition of image very clearly. Here in the image, you would be able to see the man is getting jumped down and getting transformed into an animal. It's a kind of animation and I would try to explain the animation in this way. But does it mean Animation is illusion. So let's say animation versus illusion. I'll explain you what is illusion. Sh an illusion is a showing a false things true, correct, and creating a belief that whatever we are showing is correct. So here I've tried to explain the illusion effect in two examples. On the left hand side of the image, you would be able to see a never ending triangle. Why never ending? Because there is no starting point and there is no ending point of it. And to feel, to feel the illusive effect on the second image, you might have to go back and come forth to feel the illusive effect. But I think it's a hypnotizing one. So don't get a concent don't concentrate it in more than five seconds. You might get hypnotized. So moving to the next slide, where Nikhil will explain how the animation and history about the animation. Thanks, with it. So let's talk about history about, OK, so I was born in the year 1976. Sorry, guys, it's not about me. It's about animation. So let's talk about animation here. So animation actually started off 5,000 years ago. In Iranian pottery, there is a glimpse and traces of animation. How I know all this? Wikipedia. It's quite very obvious. Uh, but, but here we are talking about animation with respect to web. So let's talk about web animation. So web animation is all started in the year 1987 with the invention of GIF. So everybody knows about animated GIF, right? If GIF was not invented, animated GIF might not have invented. Quite obvious. So, uh, so GIF invented, and the, after GIF in getting invented, the first thing we were able to see was people were actually doing experiment of creating animated GIFs. Animated GIF was an era 
where in the website, we would actually see a magical effect we haven't seen before. There were GIFs coming and have their animation on the fly. Lots of people were using it for ads and various kinds of other things. Um, and I was in that era, definitely, so I saw those GIFs coming on the pages. Sometimes irritating, but sometimes it's good. And it went for a while. People were using animated GIFs for a very long time, I mean, with respect to that era. Till the time when something known as, in late 90s, Flash got invented. Now, Adobe did a very good job by actually creating something which we can work on and we can create awesome sites using Flash. The good thing was, it was actually based on programming. So we can actually do use action scripts. Wow, for programmers, we can do programming and we can do a lot of animations, one. Second, sound, that is audio plus video. We can actually collaborate both and do something on a website. Awesome technology. We can do a lot of tutorials, we can do interactive videos, we can do a lot of things in Flash. Yes, it was good, but based on those kind of speeds at that time, it took a hell lot of time to load a flash site. I mean, I can take a coffee break and come back and then the flash site will get loaded. So yeah, so that was the error. But flash site once get loaded, it was, it was awesome. I mean, we used to go through, anybody know about Jim Carrey's site of flash? Anybody here? Now Jim Carrey has a flash site around three to four years back. It used to take around, I think, five minutes for me to load, but but after that, once you get loaded, you get an entire tour of Jim Carrey's entire journey. He's anyway a freaky guy. So you can actually go and check out all this madness there. But yeah, so it was actually done in Flash. Now Flash has a lot of performance issues. Flash has a problem with closed source because of the Adobe. Flash had a problem with respect to SEO because the search engine won't able to recognize. So many things going on. And in the middle of that, some time later, something known as CSS3 property came in the picture. CSS was already there. That's why I'm saying CSS3, not CSS. So CSS3 was having some of the new properties for animation, like transition, transform, and above all, animation. So there was a property, there's a property in CSS known as animation. Using that property without any external plugin like Flash, you can actually do animation on a browser and browser were embracing it. They were actually using it, that CSS3, and they are still using it to get your animation on the fly. Then this, after CSS3, something known as WebGL came. Oh man, this was an awesome technology. I have used WebGL before. I have seen the 3D effect, what it gives. I saw it in Chrome experiments, I think the first time when I saw WebGL. I was totally blown away with the kind of thing what it can do. WebGL was very important because WebGL is actually having a technology known as Canvas. Now remember, the Canvas is a technology with respect to CSS3 and HTML5, which we are still using and we are continue to use for animation. Now WebGL has a Canvas known as 3D Canvas. You can actually do a 3D thing. WebGL is still used in few places where you have gaming on the fly. But yeah, it's more of, in the gaming perspective, WebGL is still important. And now we are using HTML5. So HTML5, CSS3, little bit of JavaScript, you can achieve animations, awesome animations on your website. And those animations are interactive, those animations are good. And as per the future of animation goes, I think these two are doing an awesome job. So that is the history. Not mine, of animation. Over to you, Vidit. So let's move to the next slide. Why animation? Or rather say how animation can be useful to increase the usability. So when the GIF invented in 1987 and it started uh, getting used in a uh, website by 1993 when HTML invented and released, first release was in 1993. No one would have ever thought that animation can be useful to increase the website usability. Second one, to guide the user. Nowadays, most of the sites you might have seen that keeping the uh, continuously moving like an icon, like click here to scroll down or click here. Why such icons implemented? Reason is just to give the interface to the user to interact with and create the belief in the user mind that when user is interacting 
with the interface, something is getting done and uh, they are getting the desired result. Second one, for branding. What kind of sites impresses you more? I think there are two types of things which impresses you more on the website. One is the content it provides and the second one, the kind of persona or the UX, uh, any, uh, UX UI, any design kind of thing impresses you more. And it, while implementing an animation on the website, it will definitely help to create a brand name of your website and will force the user to come on your website again and again. So next one is help to help user to visualize. When user visualize about any relative content and whenever user think that uh, such kind of content will be provided on such site will definitely help the user to visualize your site and it will create a brand and it will increase the usability of the website. So how can we apply the animation on the website? So before moving to the how we can apply, let's see what are the basic principles required to implement those, uh, implement the animation. So next one, 12 basic principles of animation. Fast on your seat belt, we are moving ahead. The first one, squares and stretch. On the left hand side of the image, you would be able to see, consider the element is soft and falling down on the surface. So when it touches the ground and falling down, it's getting squares, stretch, and moving forward. So same principle I've tried to explain using a GIF image. So poor Tom getting banged by Jerry and always get boys on his head, right? So I will show you the piece of code which I have implemented to just to create this principle. So here I have used the same, uh, same example. On the right hand side, I have put a piece of code where you would be able to see the animation property of CSS. Animation property CSS contains four parameters. One, animation name, animation time, animation duration, and the effect. And the iteration count also we can implement um, and pass as a parameter into this property. An animation name will be divided into number of pieces and number, uh, number of keyframes. So we can say when uh, element is appearing, it's transiting means it's converting from opacity zero to one. So you would be able to see that from starting uh, initially, it's uh, for 15% time, it's opacity zero. And from 15 to 25, it's uh, appearing. So opacity is uh, converting to one. And after that, 35 to 45 percentage, when uh, element is falling down, translate pro transform property is used where for element is moving downside. So at that time, we are using a translate wise because the element is moving in the y axis. So, and after that, you would be able to see, I have used the transform property with the translate X parameter. So translate X, Y, because it's moving in the X axis, X direction. So, and at the end, it's, it's getting height, so its opacity turns to zero. The next one, anticipation. So what is anticipation? Any action happens, and before, before happening any actions, if an, anything is predicted, it's considered as anticipation action. So let's say, in a, as an example, in a, let's say baseball game. When baller is about to ball, at that time, baller raises legs, move backwards, and throw the ball. So while in this uh, example, when baller is raising his legs and moving backward, this, uh, this scenario is considered as anticipation action. So on the, ref on the right hand side, you would be able to see the, when the person is trying to bang the hammer hard on the surface, it's picking up the hammer, taking it up back, and uh, banging, banging, uh, banging on the ground very hard. So picking hammer and go, uh, taking it back side is considered as an anticipation action. So next one is the staging principle. On the website, you want, sometimes you want the user to focus on particular thing. So let's say when there are plenty of elements moving on the website, and if you want the user to spot the specific element, 
then it would be difficult for user to spot it. But when every elements are static and only one element is moving, it would be pretty easy for the user to spot the, uh, spot the element. So staging principle, uh, exam best example is a loader icon. And the second one is most popular is a model pop-up window we, which, which we use on the website just to grab the user's attention. So while applying the model pop-up, what we do, we add a back, back layer, means we are adding a layer behind the pop-up. So we refrain the user to visit or see any elements of the website. And we force the user to focus on the pop-up. So next one is a straight ahead action and pose to pose. Here we are going to uh, talk about two actions simultaneously. Straight ahead actions is the animation uh, which is created well framed. Well, pose to pose action is like uh, we are filling the gap between two frames. So on the right hand side of the image, when cube is rotating and jumping and rotating is considered as a pose to pose example. And when it's just rotating without taking any pose is a straight ahead action. So how we can implement such principle using CSS? So using a CSS, it would be definitely uh, beneficial to start with a pose to pose principle. And we can set the time function of uh, using a CSS and we can lead the pose to pose animation to the straight ahead action, which will be easier and feel uh, and add a feel of natural effect into the animation. The next one, follow through and overlapping. So if any action happens that cannot start all of a sudden, and if it starts, then there should be some over overflow or a follow through action must be there. So let's say uh, a car starts moving fast all of a sudden, then what happens? A tire screeches, or the body of the car feel thrust and move backside. And when car stops all of, all of a sudden, then body of the car move forward and the driver sitting inside also move for, uh, fill force and move forward. So such things where we can implement on the website. So let's say there is an element which is appearing on the website from the left hand side of the screen to the right hand side. So we can just animate it like uh, it's moving little forward, coming back and getting settled down at its original position. So next one, slow in and slow out. It's kind of relative to the previous one, but there is a slight difference between the follow through and overlapping action and slow in and slow out action. If any element starts moving, it cannot be reached at its desired speed at a stretch. Whenever element starts moving, it gradually increase the speed and uh, reach at the desired speed and move. So same way, uh, if it want to stop, the speed of that element will decrease gradually and it stop at the end. So how can we use uh, such principle using CSS? So CSS, there is a effect prop parameter which I have told you, regard, uh, which we can pass in transition or in animation. So effect is a thing, uh, so slow in and slow out is considered as a ease in and ease out effect, which we can use in transition or animation uh, uh, properties of the CSS. So in the, here in the example, you would be able to see that a blue, or the upper part of the image is slow in and slow out, where the bo uh, bottom part is a normal condition. In slow in and slow out, you would be able to see when the bo blue block is starting mo start moving, it increasing a little bit, uh, reaching at the desired speed, and uh, af after some time, it's gradually decreasing the speed and getting stop at the end. But in the normal condition, you would not be able to judge any kind of slow in and slow out effect. Is it okay? Shall we move to the next one? Am I boring? The arc. Let's say uh, I would like to uh, explain this principle using an example. 
let's say a ball is falling from the table. So when ball falls from the table, it will never come at its original height again. And after falling down, it will move forward. And while moving forward, it will create a virtual path. And if you, con if you concentrate on the virtual path, you would be able to see that the path which is created virtually is in arc shape. So same pendulum also works on the same principle, the arc principle. And how can we achieve this principle using CSS? So while applying this principle using CSS, we need to keep two things in mind. That ball is moving in two di direction, up and down, and it moving in the sideways. So by keeping these two things in mind, we can achieve this principle very easily. The next one is the secondary action. So what is secondary action? Uh, action happens after completion of primary action is the secondary action. I know I'm sounding stupid, but I couldn't find any better definition than this. So let's say what is an what could be the example of this? So when any man moving, when anyone is walking down the street or anyone is walking, so at that time, movement of the hands, movement of the hands is considered as a secondary action. Or let's say when someone jumps down the swim, jumps down in the swimming pool, at that time, the water, when the water spills out of the swimming pool, the spilling water is considered as a, a secondary action. So how we can implement such scenario or such principle in website? So let's say we have a interface we have uh, where we have allowed a user to uh, drag and drop the element. So when we are just dragging an element and try to keep it between two elements, so when two elements just give space to the dragged element and that dragged element gets settled down between two is considered as a secondary action. Here in the example, you would be able to see that when ball falls and the touches the ground, the dust kicks up. When the, so dust, kicking up the dust is considered as a secondary action. So next one, timing. Animation is all about timing. If your animation works very slowly, then it will irritate a user definitely. So your animation should be that much precise that it should not bore the user, it should not irritate the user. So uh, by applying a timing function or by applying a timing duration in transition duration and animation duration, these are the two parameters we can implement in CSS properties of transition and animation respectively. So on the right hand side of the image, you would be able to see the uh, ball moving. On the first part, ball is moving without any timing function, it's just moving. You will not feel any natural movement. But on the third part, you would be clearly see that when ball start moving, it's going up slowly, reaching at the height and falling down and giving you the effect that ball is falling down because of the gravity force. So timing is a very crucial principle which should be implemented using, as I said, transition duration and animation duration. So next one, exaggeration. So as the word describe the what is exaggeration, showing a, too, uh, showing a thing too big, but actually it is not, is an exaggeration. So most of the uh, cartoon characters implement this principle and follow this principle. In the example also, you would be able to see two minions. One minions throwing a other minion using a cannon gun. So how can we implement such example on website? So let's say when we are implementing uh, an image and showing the image and hovering on it, we just scale up the image little bit. So scaling of the image is considered as an exaggeration principle we have implemented. The next one, solid drawing. <clears throat> solid drawing is nothing but modern browser had recently or since three, four years started supporting three dimension effect. So if you concentrate on the white cube, you would be able to see that cube is rotating not on X axis, not on the y axis, but on the z axis, which is considered as a third dimension. 
So how can we achieve the third dimension uh, using a CSS? So we can implement translate 3D properties or we can use a perspective property of CSS. But while using a perspective property, we should keep one thing in mind that, and we should be very careful while using a perspective property because if any time animation stops, at, stops working, then pers if the perspective property is not used carefully, then it could create a very shabby look and smudge look of, uh, of your element. So this example I've tried to show you, no, no doubt about it, I have not implemented, I'm not showing you the actual real time example, but this solving drawing principle is most of the time being used in games. Or let's say there are plenty of sliders, jQuery sliders available in uh, web world, which is using a third dimension principle, which is created using a translate 3D effects, which could uh, just rotate the slider in the uh, three dimension. So last one, the appeal. So let's say it's an artwork. It's an artwork to add soul in the object and makes it so charismatic that use, it will connect the user to the artist and make, the un make it understand that how the animation and what artist is trying to explain. And I would definitely say that carefully crafted animation on the web page create an appeal. Here I have tried to explain this principle using a simple button where you would be able to see that at the initial time it just activate button while clicking it's showing a loader icon and it's saying activated. That's simple. But it's creating a how simple button can be create an appeal by implementing this principle. So after completion of these 12, Principle, Oof. finally. Let's move to the next one. When to use animation. The first one, to enhance the design. So I've seen that designers are always possessive uh, regarding colors. You uh, are UX developers are possessive about personas of the website or the application. But UI developers are possessive about animation they are implementing. To enhance the design means uh, I don't feel just to copy the website, means copy the PSDs, Photoshop files, and implement those Photoshop files and implement it into the web page is not a easy or uh, not a difficult task. But to enhance the design, we can use animation and we can move the elements from here to there and give a rich look to the website. So next one, interactive web application. Let's say we have a product and uh, we want to show the manufacturing process of that product. So at that time we can use this uh, interactive web application kind of where user will interact with the interface. User will, uh, means you, website will guide the user to press some button and after pressing or after scrolling down or after any event taking from the uh, user, website will, uh, so product will move to the next uh, process, uh, next uh, manufacturing process step, which will give the rich look to the website. Storytelling. The third one is the storytelling where we can use uh, this animation. So nowadays, most of the UI designers and your designers and UI, UI developers started creating their websites, started creating their use, uh, resumes using a uh, website and implementing such resumes in a, such a creative way, uh, creative way which uh, means just, it would be like you just have to scroll down and uh, uh, by scrolling down, it will show you whole, life story about that UI, de UI developers or the designers. They just put the skills, uh, skill set they have, what kind of project they have worked on, what kind of challenging they have faced, how they overcome and all. So next section, next slide is where, can, where animation can be used. So first one, navigation. I believe navigation is the most important element on the website because navigation is the only element 
which is going to be consistent on all the pages and user is going to use this element very frequently throughout the website so let's say how navigation can be or how animation can be implemented on navigation so while clicking on the hamburger icon so navigation is sliding down so sliding down is kind of considered as an animation so we can just wrap up, uh, we can implement the slide in effect we can sliding from the left or the right hand side of the screen or we can just provide a kind of effect where animation is op uh, or getting open like uh, curtains so such kind of such kind of e effect we can implement using a uh, 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 css the next one registration and subscription form so registration and subscription how we can implement an animation on registration and subscription form so while clicking or while focusing on any field element if we feel uh, if we just provide that kind of transitive effect to the element it would definitely grab the user's attention so let's say while clicking on it the effect it's showing the border element the transition effect border is appearing is a kind of transitive effect which i have implemented which will f uh, means force the user to grab uh, the kind uh, effect and uh, while click without let's say without uh, filling any data into the field if i just uh, uh, submit this form the kind of shaky element will definitely grab the user's attention and user will check what they have not filled and what are the required field so such kind of thing we can use uh, using animation and we can achieve the user's attention so next one related in uh, related animation i hope all here are working as a uh, in a drupal shop so let's say you have your in house product or in house website where you want to show the let's say there is a page and you want to display the contributor of the month so and how can we implement the contributor of the month so we can implement uh, we can add the relative content like this as i have implemented over here this is nikhil sukul so by hovering on it you would be able to see that it's slightly moving on the left and the relative information is appearing so kind these kind of things we can implement using an animation which will you uh, which will add a, a very rich look of the website so you would be able to see that when hovering the grayscale image is also getting converted to the color one and it's showing the relate uh, relative information about me and nikhil so moving to the next how can we how to use animation the first one interface element animation so let's say uh, there are uh, plenty of time it happens that you are keep clicking on the something but you are not uh, understanding that whatever you are doing or whatever whatever the event uh, event you are making is giving you any result or not so i will give you an example of it let's say there is an e-commerce website and there is an add to cart button if you are clicking on the add to cart button and it's not showing anywhere that item is added to the cart it will make you frustrated and definitely it will lead uh, it will lead to the distraction from the website and in the sales distraction can be death so interface element animation how can we use that so by clicking on an add to cart button if we just pop up the cart icon and increase the count by 1 will make the user believe that that item has been added to the cart and it will stop user to make the same event again and again the next one waiting animation so the waiting animation it is self uh, self explained thing to showing a loader icon and why such kind of uh, means how we can use this animation so means by keeping a a loader icon but it will prevent the user to make the same event again and again and by clicking uh, stop uh, prevent the user to clicking on the any element of the website so giving showing a loader icon after one click will make the user understand that something is being done something is being processed at the background and the result will appear soon 
so for, when such kind of animation you have you uh, you have seen uh, let's say in the nine windows 90 when windows 95 and 98 was launched at that time you might have seen by clicking on any file or any folder you would have seen the hourglass effect so hourglass was keep rotating so you would be able to judge that something is happening on the back end, back end and the result will be come up very soon and in the real world it's nowadays it's very essential to keep the transparency between the user to make them believe that something is happening and you will get, definitely get the result don't worry so decorative animation animation nowadays is very popular in being used on the website but it is very important how radical we are using the animation on the website so let's say how decorative animation can be used and decorative animation means let's say a uh, hamburger icon is very popular nowadays so by clicking on the hamburger icon navigation panel will come up but navigation after uh, by clicking on the hamburger icon it will convert it to the cross sign it will easily understand understand by it will be un understood by the user that by clicking on it it will get converted to the cross sign so user can understand that by clicking on it it will the open navigation panel will get closed so moving to the next slide which is responsive animation anyone who is not working on any responsive website or don't want to implement the responsive kind uh, responsive web applications or something anyone otherwise you would be a caveman so let's say animation uh, animation also needs space to perform so playing area we are getting on the desktop is very large than the playing area we are getting on the handheld devices so two basic techniques to maintain the balance between the animation and design first one is a focused art direction so what is focused art direction focused art direction is a technique which will allow you to decide which element is important to implement the animation so let's say there are plenty of elements you have implemented an animation but suddenly it would be difficult for you to move the element even 100 pixel on the handheld devices and if you feel that uh, that animation is not necessary to apply at that time on the handheld devices you can prevent it so i have sh i have sho i am showing you here the piece of code which will uh, let's say i am give you the live example with this code this one so here you would be able to see uh, let's uh, so here i have implemented this using by hovering on it it's getting colored it's showing the uh, relative description about it and it's scaling up so same way when i have implemented in the ipad so i have pre i have prevent the such kind of hovering effect so there is no hovering effect in ipad so when you know such kind of event is not going to happen at that time we can use the focused art direction technique so moving to the next which is a responsive choreography technique so what is responsive choreography let's say in the larger playground means on the desktop you have a elements which are appearing in a linear manner means one after another in one line but same way we are imp when we are implementing and converting into the mobile devices it should appear or it will converted into the stacked manner so it will appear one after another but in a stacked manner one below the other so how can we achieve that so first of first this i have shown you uh, sh uh, uh, keep the code of uh, this using a media query so here i am showing the code how can we achieve a responsive design using jquery so resize is a function which we can use or the second one is a very uh, good example where we can just uh, measure the width of the viewport 
and considered if it's less than something then it will be considered considered as a that site is getting rendered in a tablet or in mobile so responsive choreography is uh, very essential and how to show means how to display the correct thing in a linear uh, on the desktop and uh, on the mobile let's see So you have seen that one element is appearing one after another in a linear manner. So when you are converting it to the to this, you would be able to see that element is appearing in a stacked manner. So this is a responsive choreography. So let's move to the next slide. I think this should be uh, make you understand by so a senior solution architect because performance is the topic regarding which sol uh, solution architect are more possessive about. Thank you, Vidit. Um, everybody is with me? Hello. Please wake up. OK, guys. So I am being a senior Drupal architect or being a Drupal architect, the f we worries about performance a lot. We get a lot of problems that why our performance, why our site is so slow, can you make it performant? And on top of it, if I will say I will animate your site, they will be going bonkers. My site is already slow and you're saying you will animate it? Come on, man, it's not possible. So let's talk about how we can make your site performant and we can still animate your site. So there are some principles and there are some rules which you need to follow. If you follow it properly, you can actually animate your site. The first one, these are the things which you need to avoid. Don't use these kind of properties when you are implementing animation on your site. They are the heaviest properties on CSS3. Come on, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about CSS3. So these are heaviest for CSS3. First one, translate 3D. So I think you might have followed with it, those who are already awake, that with this we're talking about that translate 3D and one more property known as perspective, which we can use in CSS3 perspective, right? So translate 3D is a property which is very heavy for a browser to render. So what happens is when you are actually working on X, Y, and Z, or Z axis, the Z axis property to rendering for a browser is difficult. So for the browser to render that, it's okay, it will render it, but it will take some time to render it, and that will create a performance impact for you. So rather than using Translate 3D, use Perspective. So avoid this property altogether. Back face visibility. This is self-explanatory. Back face visibility. I have a cube. So all the cube have four sides, right? Three will be visible on the screen, but there will be one more face which I can't see. I have to go back. Can I go back? No, I can't. This is only one way I can see the browser. So the back face property visibility means that the three side of the cube which is visible, there is one back side of that particular cube is anyway not visible. But this property is available in CSS3, which you can make it true and false. If you make it true, which means they are trying to make that when you flip that particular or rate, rate, rate that particular cube, the back face property will actually show the back size. Doesn't work. And same thing, if you make it back, back face visibility false, again, the back face property will not going to show the back side property of that cube. So rather than using that, avoid it. There's no need of back face property anyways. The property is still available, but not need to be used. And it's quite heavy for performance will change. Anybody heard of it? Yes, we will change. So will change is a property available in browser which give a signal that something is going to change on this property in future. So which means I have 20 properties on a browser which all are being animated. And for 20 in five properties, I put will change. So two problems. One, if you tell the browser that something is going to happen in this property in future, 
the browser will not cache that property. It will not going to cache those four or five properties where I have put will change because it know that it's need, it will change after some time. So A, performance impact, it is not cacheable. Your property itself, your element itself will be always there and keep on hitting, the browser will keep on thinking that something is going to will change after some time. So will change property is not required if you are having something for performance because what we need to do is when the element is loaded on the browser, it need to be cached. The animation is cached, it is easy to render. Rather than making it will change, it will always uncacheable. Okay, so one is those are the heaviest properties. Second, technology. Now everybody knows, and we are already talking about for a while, about CSS3 and JavaScript. Yeah, we can achieve a lot of animations in JavaScript. I think you might have seen in a lot of sites sliders and JavaScript effect to create a lot of animations. CSS3 already having those properties available for us, transform, animate, animation, and you know, translate, translation and all. But we need to be very careful by using all these things. For example, if I have a site on a, on a page load, I'm actually having a big JavaScript file loaded to do all the animation, it'll have a huge performance impact on the page load. But it can be possible that I'm doing very small animation, which is giving a very good effect. It doesn't require that I need to have the entire page load, maybe an Ajax call. So we need to be very, very careful by using all this. Preferably, recommend it, use both. Use JavaScript and CSS3, blend it together carefully, based on that created animation for the page. So your page can have CSS3 properties, can I have JavaScript, or can I have both, based on the amount of animations you have on a page. Okay, so we have already talked about what kind of properties you need to avoid. Okay, so what kind of properties I can use if they all are avoided? So we can use opacity, scale, rotation, position. Now believe me, using these four properties together will give you most of your animations on your site. If you are working it together for all these four properties, using animation, translate, and transform, and these four properties, you can actually do most of your animation on your site. So these four properties are very important, and they are not going to hamper your performance. Your performance will be good, and you can use these four. Now one more thing we need to talk about is in a website or in a page, when we are doing performance impact analysis, we always have to see how many properties in a web page are getting animated when the page is loaded. So let's take an example that there is a particular page which has, I'm talking about 20, let's stick on 20. So there are 20 elements on that page which are animated as soon as the page is loaded. Now, the way it will work is, is that browser need in the background need to load all those animations and then the page will get loaded, A. B, we could not do that. If you're doing it, it will have big performance impact on the loading of the page. So what we can do, we can delay the animation. We can prioritize the animation. The page should load and only the most important animation on that page should animate first. So the page is loaded, you are able to see the page, you can interact with the page, and slowly in the background, all the rest of the animation which are required are slowly loading, as Ajax, as parallel. So it's giving a user impact that the, your performance is not a problem, the page is loaded, and still in the background, all the other animations are loaded. So this principle is actually offset animation start time. So where we can actually prioritize and delay the animation based on that. Exhausted? Okay, so we are the last one, animation in Drupal. After that, we're just going to show the demo. Yeah, over to you, Vidit. Thank you, Nikhil. Solution arch architect are most, possess most possessive about a performance. So let's see how we can implement an animation in Drupal. Before moving forward, so let's say as a Drupal is a CMS, it is very essential to I believe that the content for the content we are showing uh, on the website should implement animation. But 
any drupal is also being used in e-commerce website and i have already explained how can we use a such kind of animation or different different kind of animation using an interface element animation so various ways we can implement animation in drupal so let's see first how we can implement animation in drupal 7 so in drupal 7 recently these modules uh, developed animate.css block animation wow.js and still full full page.js is in sandbox but these are the four modules uh, which we can use to animate the website and let's see how we can implement the animation in drupal 8 so either contribute all the modules in drupal 8 porting it to the drupal 8 and use it or use the core css or js file of animate.css full page.js or any other js framework which is being used for the animation so let's see the demo so when i loading the page the content is appearing with a kind of zoom in effect so i have just used the animate.css i have implement the class animated and a zoom in effect so when the page loads it will add automatically such uh, classes to the uh, respective content and it will give you the very nice effect transitive effect so and as i explain you in the why animation required to guide the user at that time i have discussed about this uh, click me here button by clicking on this button it will give you the sliding effect and which will take you to the next one so these are the verticals of our company company is working on and by hovering on it you would be able to see the relative description about the relative verticals so when this the initially you would be able to see the description is not showing we are i'm not showing description initially it's high it's hidden when i am hovering on it it's appearing so it's converting the opacity from zero to one the height of that object is getting converted from the 10 pay, uh, 10 percentage to the 100 percentage so you are seeing the kind of curtain curtain is moving upside kind of such such kind of effect you would be able to see when i'm hovering on it move to the next one uh drupal 4 our my company is working uh drupal for these four major things we these more uh these four more uh let's say domain enterprise high education integration with third party media and publishing so while hovering on it the uh, relative box is scaling up getting converted to colored and uh, showing the relative description about it so as i've explained earlier while hovering on the image the image is turning down uh, converting to the colored grayscale image is converting to the colored image and showing the relative information and if you do uh, see this demo very carefully the you have implement you might have implemented the slider horizontally but i have implemented the slider in vertically so if that's also using a, J a javascript library so here the screen is uh, you are not able to see the navigation here is here i have provided the dotted navigation where you just click on any particular section and it will uh, take you to the uh, relative section but it's not appearing over here but you would be able to see the slightly uh, bold up icon uh, the black icon over here you would be able to see that so by that you can just uh, navigate throughout the page by clicking on it so and as i explained earlier without filling any uh, information any in field and if we are if, if i am submitting the form the shaking effect and uh, while focusing on field it's giving a transitive effect it's nothing but animation and as i said when clicking on the hamburger icon it's converting to the cross mark is a kind of decorative animation which helps the user to understand that by clicking on it it will close the open navigation panel so let's move to the next one which is very interesting any question
any questions or we are good enough no questions we have explained everything very very clearly crystal clear in everybody's mind no questions required just get Everybody rid of it yeah. just get rid of the browsers <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there are few uh, js files html html5 shiv i think there is a js file there html5 boilerplate if you google it out you will find lot of uh, uh, css and modernizer is available there so there are some boilerplates available for html5 if you use those they are compatible with respect to i6 and i7 older i think those only right not netscape navigator i know <laughs> any other questions please um how do you deal with um, animation and accessibility requirements can you say the question sure. at the mic yeah. okay so yeah i think so uh, the question is how do we deal with animation whilst maintaining accessibility so wc3 um things Sorry, I broke it. I don't know answer about this. <laughs> <laughs> I will do some research. Just give we will still do animate on that and let you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so provide me your Any other question? Card. Please easy ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, the source you showed for the first animation but yeah. for the other 11, can we also Will we have access to that? Will you provide that? Yeah, we can. It was anyway very exhaustive session, so I thought every t all the 12 will be too exhaustive here. But we have all the source code. So definitely we can share out. So anybody wants source code, we have our Twitter handle and email address. You can please send across your details and we will share it out. It's not easy to put it public, right? GitHub or something like that. Any other questions? <laughs>